A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. When the western United States was first opened to settlers, the gun law ruled the cattle country. It was then that the phantom figure of the plains rode in the cause of justice. It was he who led the fight for law and order. And the stories of his adventures have come down to us through the generations. Return with us once more to those thrilling days when the west was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, silver! Fellows waiting for us on the trail ahead! Are you still there? Hello! As our story opens, we find the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, heading south toward the Rio Grande. They have spent the day in the saddle, and now, with night upon them, are looking for a place to buy feed for their horses and provisions for themselves. We hear Tonto speaking. There, light. It must be a ranch house, Kimosabe. Maybe we get grub there, huh? We'll try. Are you hungry, Silver, old fellow? <laughs> Him say him plenty hungry. <laughs> and I can't blame him. Here's the lane leading to the house, Tonto. Come, Silver. Uh, we maybe get grub quick now. You'd better speak to the people inside, Kimosabe. My mask might frighten them. Tonto, do that. I'll rein up here and wait. What that? Who, who, oh, Silver? Oh, my God. Oh, that shot just grazed my saddle. You get out of here, Steve Baker. Or I'll... Oh, oh, it's a mess, man. What's the trouble? I thought you were someone else. Please forgive me. Wait! Ruth, what is it? What happened? Oh, the darling. That, that plenty strange. That woman mistook us for someone else, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Get up, white fellow. We let them think we're leaving. Uh -huh. But we'll circle around, then come back again. Why do that? She sounded as though she feared this man she called Steve Drago. Mm, that's right. That was a Taylor place, wasn't it? Uh-huh. And she must be Mrs. Taylor. Oh, 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 oh. 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 They can't hear us at this distance. We'll go back now. We not make noise. We'll be careful. Come on, Silver. Get him up, my fellow. I want to find out why she fears Drago. Huh? She must have been expecting him. Or she wouldn't have been waiting outside the fire when he arrived. Her plenty brave. It was a brave thing for a woman to do. But she must be desperate to attempt it. That's what Tonto think. We don't want to get too close to the house this time. Maybe her outside again. I don't think so. He probably wouldn't have the courage to try the same thing a second time. Uh, this is close enough. Oh, 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 my, oh my God. No one will be 
able to see the horses if we leave them here. No. Trees, hide them. Stay here, Silver. Come, Toto. Mm, he come. There's an open window. Mm. Toto, see inside. Keep your voice down, Kimasabe. Oh. That must be your husband with us. Not uh, him. Quiet. Perhaps we'll hear enough to learn what the trouble is. Ruth. Ruth, you shouldn't have done it. If if that had been Steve Drago, it had only made things worse. I, I'd like to kill him. Well, anyhow, you sure scared them other fellows away. I wish you'd do the same to Steve. We ain't strong enough to fight him, honey. If you're a man, you will leave. But how? He's got a whole bunkhouse full of cow hens. The last fellow I had working for me drawed his pay yesterday. You can't fight against odds like that. No. Steve grabbed off the water hole and left men to guard it so as I couldn't water my stock. What cows I got that ain't been run over the edge of the canyon are dying of thirst. If I were a man, I'd fight no matter what the odds. I'd never give up. I can't call in the sheriff because there ain't no witnesses to what he done. Witnesses? And this is all open range. So I can't claim he's took what belonged to me. None of us ranchers hold title to any land but what our houses are built on. This isn't something for the law to settle. I know it, honey, and... And I reckon I'm a mighty poor excuse for a husband. But it's just something that's in my blood that I, I can't help. Lee, it isn't true. You just told yourself that so often. You, you've made yourself believe it. But Pa was... And you think that because your father was a, a coward, you are too. I've heard folks talk about the way Pa died. He, he just stood there and let them shoot him down. He was too scared even to go for his gun. You don't know whether that's true or not. That was over in Wyoming. But the story got back. But, Lee, and his paw was the same way. It, it's just something that runs in the family, I guess. Oh, honey, listen to me. I know you better than anyone else in the world. I know you're brave and strong and fine. I know that you're as capable as any other man on the range. It's only that you don't believe in yourself. Oh, Lee, believe what I tell you. Not the stories you hear from other people. It's the only way you can keep from losing your home, your self-respect, and... and me. I'll try, Ruth. When Steve Drago comes here tonight, you just tell him... Uh, that sounds like him now. Now remember what I've told you. Come in. Evening, folks. Me and Buck here dropped over just like I said we would. <laughs> Howdy. And I guess there ain't no question about what I'm here for. You, you skunk. Now, ma'am, there ain't no call for names like that. Well, Lee, what do you say? I, I ain't moving out. Huh? You heard me. <laughs> well, well, if the rabbit ain't showing some fight. <laughs> you look here, Lee Taylor. When I tell you to move off this range, I mean business. But I tell you... Do you hear me? I won't move out. You... You ain't got no right to try and steal my range. I'm staying here. Yeah? Should I let him have it, boss? <laughs> no. I reckon I can handle this fellow all right. Get away from me. Get your hands off him. Sit down. <clears throat> you... You rotten... Now, sit there and listen. I'm giving you orders. You're going to be moved out of here by tomorrow noon or I'm gun-whipping you. And when I say noon, I don't mean even one minute after. Lee, get up. I'll show you. Get up when I tell you to sit, will you? There. Oh. You knocked me down. Fight him, Lee. Fight him. There's two again, one. Oh. <laughs> I reckon you won't be doing no fighting. Come on, Buck. Let's be riding. Yeah. And maybe you'd better start packing right now, Lee. I won't. Yeah? You won't what? I... I'll start packing. <laughs> Lee. What? What is it, Ruth? I... I'm leaving you. Bly. I don't blame you, honey. I love you, Lee. And I still have faith in you. Even now. Faith? In me? But I can't live with a man I don't respect. I... I said I'm not blaming you. I'll... I'll be waiting for you always. Waiting for you... 
for you to prove yourself. belongings stowed away in the buckboard, Lee Taylor and Ruth left the ranch house behind them and drove to town. They rode in silence until finally Lee spoke. You, you still figuring on going back to your folks, Ruth? Uh, I have to, Lee. Uh-huh. But I'll be there until you want me. I reckon you just better forget all about me, honey. I ain't worth thinking about. I know better than that. I'll be stopping off in town. Yeah. Get along there. Get up. I'll drop into the cafe and see if maybe I can't find me a job wrangling for some outfit. I, I hope you do well. Uh-huh. Thanks. And, and you let me know wherever you go. Sure I will, honey. There's the cafe now. Well, uh, I'll just pull up in front and leave you the buckboard. I, I don't just hanker to go out and meet your folks. All right. Here we are. Oh, there. Oh. Oh, boy. There. Here's the reins, honey. I... I'll be getting off. Oh, oh Lee, honey. Uh, everything's going to be all right, Ruth. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lee. Get up there. Get up. I guess there ain't nothing lower than me anywhere. And there goes the finest wife a man ever had. Well, if it ain't Lee Taylor come to town. Howdy. You having a drink? I don't reckon I will. Look here, barkeep. You don't know any outfit that's needing a top hand, do you? You looking for work? Well, man's got to eat. Well, Lee, I've always liked you, but... Yeah? Oh, doggone it. I reckon you savvy without my telling you why it ain't going to be easy for you to find a job around here. So everybody knows about me and Steve Grego, huh? Well, there's been a heap of talk. Sure. Sure, I know. I'm a coward. I'm a yellow rat. I've got no more backbone than a paw had afore me. I ain't fit to eat at the same table with real men or share the same bunkhouse. I ain't... Now, take it easy, I Lee. won't take it easy. I'm sick of the whole thing. I wish I'd never well, been... Well, Lee, I see you moved out today like the boss told you to. You... Looking for trouble? I ought to shoot you and Steve and your whole crooked bunch. You take my advice and you clear out of this country. Yeah? Before me or one of the boys loses our tempers and takes you over his knee and spanks you. <laughs> Get out there trying to talk, Buck. <laughs> Lee can't do his own fight, Lee. He's got to have you stick up for him. I've heard what you've been saying, Buck. And I'm here to tell you there ain't going to be no brawling in town while I'm sheriff. This ain't no fight, Sheriff. Lee here is too yellow. I, I reckon I'll be running along, fellas. Hey, what's that? Hey, who's that fellow just came in? He's mad. An outlaw. I'm not an outlaw. Put up your hands. No, you won't. Look at that brawl. Like chain lightning. You can't arrest me, sir, for wearing a mask. But I'll leave. Huh? I came here for you. What's that for me? I want to talk to you. Put on them guns. I'm the law here. Lee and I are leaving. What do you want me for? What do you... Come along. Let go my arm. Hey, wait. What are you taking, Lee? You'll see him again soon enough. I don't have to go with you. I... Out that door. What's the idea? I'm going to help you. You can't help me. Nobody can. Get in that saddle. Stop it. Hurry. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue the story. Steve Drago, a powerful and ruthless rancher, drove some of Lee Taylor's cattle from the range, refused to let the others use the only water hole in the district, and finally ordered Taylor to leave the country. Lee, in spite of the urging of his wife, gave in to Steve, believing himself a coward because his father had been branded a coward. The Lone Ranger learned of the situation and at the point of his gun forced Lee to accompany him. Now as our second act opens, we see the masked man reining in his great horse Silver at the small, well-hidden camp where Tonto has been waiting. Oh, Silver! Oh, Silver! Steady, boy! Oh. Get down, Lee. What do you want with me? I ain't got nothing worth the stealing. You're going to listen to something I have to tell you. You got the best of me. Sit down over there. First, I want to ask you what you know about your father's death. So, you've heard about that, too. Perhaps. Well, if you have, maybe you're savvy what's been the matter with me. Tell me about your father. There ain't much to tell. And what there is ain't the kind of thing a fellow can take much pride in. Yes? Paul left these parts when I was still just a young one. He went up to Wyoming, figuring that maybe he could find good range up there so as we could move. I've heard that. He met up with some fellow, and they planned to go into partnership. But they fell out over some cash being stole. This other hombre went gunning for Paul, and, and then... Go on. And then folks say Paul was so scared that he couldn't even go for his gun when this other fellow and his friends caught up with him. And you've let this story frighten you all these years. Like father, like son, I reckon. I suppose the first time you ran into trouble, you were scared. It's just in my blood. Don't you realize that anyone can be frightened? That doesn't mean he's a coward if he fights in spite of it. But instead, you told yourself that you must be a coward because you believed your father to be one. Well, there. There wasn't anything else I could think. And you've always believed what people told you of that shooting in Wyoming? Oh, but why shouldn't I? Listen to me. I have a story to tell you. It's about a man who, like your father, went to Wyoming. Yeah? He went there looking for good rangeland, but the country there is rough and dangerous. And then one day, as he was riding alone along a canyon trail... I know what this trail was like. It never come this way. Careful, old fella. What's that? I'm trapped. The trail's sliding away. Something had started a landslide just as he rode along that treacherous path. But instead of being plunged to the bottom of the canyon, which would have met his death, he was saved by a small scrub tree a third of the way down. He hung on. He couldn't climb back. And if he loosened his hold, he'd be dashed against the rocks hundreds of feet below. Finally, however, he managed to get his gun from its holster and fire three signal shots. Uh, if I don't bring somebody, I'm done for. The, the roots are pulling out. I'll, I'll be falling in just a minute. I can't hold on. Hold me! Hang on there, friend. I'll take the rope in only a second. Hurry. Hurry, Ramagana. Hurry. Hurry up. Hurry, please. <laughs> hurry. 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 This second man, with only his rope and horse to assist him, struggled to save the life of the man clinging to that weak support. With the trail still crumbling, the lives of both men were threatened. But finally, the work was done. And Jim was back on firm ground once more. Jim? We'll call him that in the story. But, but that was my pa's name. Was it? Go ahead. Tell me the rest. Well, Jim and young Fletcher became firm friends. Jim owed his life to the younger man, and Fletcher, in turn, introduced Jim to his father. They talked of ranching and decided to go into a partnership. That was my father. Wait. But young Fletcher liked to gamble. He soon owed more money than he could pay. He knew where his father's strong box was kept. And then one night, when he thought everyone was asleep. There. A thousand dollars in folded money. That'll pay what I own. It'll keep me. What are you doing? Huh? You, 
You're stealing. I got to have it. I got to. Don't tell my pa. If this ain't paid, them gamblers will kill me. Look here, I saved your life. You can't let pa know about this. You can't. And, and then what did pa, Jim, I mean, do? What could he do? He couldn't tell the father of the man who had saved his life that his son was a thief. He couldn't make the boy put the money back and be killed by those gamblers. And he didn't have the money himself to help. Yeah? He had only one choice. When the boy had gone, Jim wrote a note. Said that he had to leave in a hurry. Then saddled and rode off. But what did he do that for? He knew he'd be suspected of theft instead of the boy. He hoped to make his escape so that it wouldn't matter. But old Fletcher, believing Jim had used his hospitality to steal from him, pursued him at once. And the trail led to a lonely mountain cabin. You must be there, boys. Oh, oh. I'll get him. I'll get the sneak myself. You fellas stay here. Stand where you are. I've been looking for you to catch me. Where's the money you stole? I ain't got it. No, Ryan. Maybe I am. Maybe I ain't. But that's all I got to say. Killing's too good for you. You come to my house, pretend like you're a friend, then run off with my cash. That ain't true. But I'm not arguing with you. And I'm giving you an even chance. Go for your gun. I, I won't shoot you. Go for your gun, I say. No. Well, I gave you your warning. I can't do more than that. I'm counting three. And if you don't draw by then, I'm shooting anyhow. One. But, but why wouldn't he shoot? His life had once been saved by young Fletcher. But I still Jim don't... couldn't fire upon the father of the man who had risked his own life to save his. Then, then that's why my father didn't draw. It wasn't because he was yellow at all. Do you still believe cowardice is in your blood? Look here, stranger. My paw was braver than if he'd fought it out. And what are you going to do? I'll show you. Where's your horse? Here, Silver. You're taking me back to my ranch. Caldo! Uh -huh. We're leaving, but you do as we planned. How to do it? What paw could do, I can do. And I'll show Steve Drago that he ain't got men enough to take from me what's mine. Good. Come on, Silver. The two men raced across country to Taylor's place. It was almost evening when they arrived, but the gathering darkness did not conceal their arrival from Buck, who had been stationed nearby to warn Steve Drago if Lee should come back. We see Buck now as he draws up before Steve's ranch house. Over there. Oh, oh, oh. Stand there, Blackie. Boss. What's the matter, Buck? Lee's come back. That was ranch? Just now. He rode up with a mask fella. Why, then? But where are you going? I'm going to teach that young fool a lesson. But wait for me. I'm riding ahead alone. I don't need no help to handle that hombre. But look here, I... You get the other fellows together and ride after. And if there's anything left of them when I get done, you fellas can finish up. <laughs> alone when he heard hoof stop outside. A moment later, heavy steps crossed his porch. And then there was a loud knock on the door. Walk right in. You blasted sniveling fool. The next time I give you orders, you'll know enough to follow him. I'm not taking your orders no more. Huh? I'm getting back to my range. I'm stocking more cattle. 
And there's something else I'm going to do. Yeah? I'm going to knock your block off. Why, you... Come on, get it. I'll show you. Here's one to begin with. I'll break you in two for that. And here's another for you. Blast you. Put on that chair. Take that. (laughs) You missed. But if that's the way you're fighting, here's something for you. You'll give me orders, will you? No. No. And this ought to finish you off. Get away. Leave me be. Boss, what's happened? Kill him. Shoot him. I'll take care of him. Oh, my hand. Up with your hands, all of you. You can come in now, Sheriff. Me. I, I saw it all. Oh, yes. <laughs> Honest, honey, I... I never felt better in my life. Steve, you and your whole bunch are going to jail. You can't jail us. You just think I can. I heard you tell Buck to kill Lee. And if the masked fellow hadn't shot first, he'd have done it. Ruth, honey, it was the masked fellow showed me I didn't need to be no coward. I know, Lee. The engine told me when he brought the sheriff and me here. Come, Tonto. Uh, we'll leave while they're not watching us. Mm, that good thing. Steady, silver old fellow. Yep. <laughs> you, you tell plenty, plenty good story. <laughs> I did the work, Kimosabe. <laughs> um, but him not know that not him father. I didn't tell Lee that story was about his father, but he thought it was. And as long as he believes it, he'll keep his courage. Uh, Come on, silver. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.